on uh, August the 6th, 2015, we visited uh, the new HBU Center in the heart of Yerevan. This impressive complex was donated through the generosity of benefactors Nazaren Ardemis Nazarian and it was inaugurated on April the 4th, 2015. The highlight of our visit was meeting Mr. Yevaskin Yakubian, HBU Central Board member, and learning about the many ambitious projects of the HBU in Armenia and the importance of this complex, which Mr. Yakubian likes to name HBU House of Inspiration. We now go uh -huh. to the interview we had with Mr. Masken Yakubian. In, within the Central Board, all of the members, that we need to introduce change, new vision, new mission, not new mission, but new vision for the AGBU for the next 100 years. Coming from the fact that the Armenian reality as a whole has changed, has changed mainly because we have Armenia now, we mm -hmm. have an independent country. So all these traditional and big organizations that have been established like AGBU more than 100 years ago and have uh, a certain history, but we cannot continue with the same uh, methodology, with the same uh, approach, just because, as I said, the fact that the Armenian reality has changed. The priorities have shifted. And we have a new variable in the equation, and it's an important variable. It's a variable with a heavy weight. It's the existence of an independent country, which used to be a dream. So, AGBU has been going through a brainstorming session for the past two, two, two and a half, even three years, that if I were to create an organization like AGBU today, today with this new reality, what it should look like? How can such an organization serve the nation best? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Ironically, after all of these uh, brainstorming sessions, discussions within AGBU, with people from outside AGBU who have put uh, feedback into these thoughts, the priority always came as you know education as a first priority and now development of the country development because we believe that having a strong armenia is key for the survival of armenians in the diaspora which was proving to be harder and harder during the last years I mean, just to preserve our identity, our language, our culture, was proving to be very hard in the diaspora. And we believe that now that we have Armenia, it's going to serve that purpose. So having a strong Armenia is key. So this is where the two priorities come from. You know, education, and when we say education, we're talking about education in Armenia and education in the diaspora. So and uh, strengthening the, the country, strengthening the... So coming here to this new building, I mean, it was just uh, an added bonus. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have n a new spirit, a new place that gives us energy, it gives us hope. And uh, as, as I was saying uh, before, that, you know, within the, uh, the building, we have other organizations uh, like-minded organizations mm -hmm. that are sharing more or less <clears throat> the vision and the mission of AGBU. And they are all, you know, uh, are willing to cooperate, uh, partner, merge, or, you know, I mean different formulas mm -hmm. uh, to reach our goals. And again, they have the same goals. They have education as a priority, and also uh, the development of the country. So we have IDEA Foundation, uh, just the floor beneath us. Uh, and you know that IDEA Foundation is the, let's say, the holding foundation of the different initiatives that Rupen Vartanian and mm -hmm. his uh, group, because he's not alone, he has also people uh, with him, around him, uh, one of whom is uh, our, one of our board members, uh, Nubar Afeyan. And uh, 
we are crisscrossing on many level, levels, you know, with what we're trying to do. And so having them in the building, again, it's an added value to being here to exchange ideas, to create the synergy amongst the different organizations. And we have Lewis Foundation, who is mainly, uh, I mean, foundation uh, to uh, empower uh, bright Armenians in the education field, sending them to the top 10 universities of the world. And, uh, you know, they finance more than 50% of all their uh, education expenses, not only the tuition, but also the uh, housing, the accommodation, the books, uh, travel expenses, and etc. And we're partnering with them as well. Uh, 100 lives on the second floor as well. And again, one of uh, Mr. Rupen Vartanian's initiatives having uh, to do with the uh, the next phase of what we do after the centennial of the Armenian genocide. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, just to keep the momentum going, but in a totally different, uh, on a totally different platform. Its main idea is to uh, uh, recognize and give gratitude to people, individuals, countries, or organizations that have done something positive during the genocide years. So you see, I mean, all these people in the building and all this interaction is going to give, uh, I think, uh, fruits. And we're trying to come up with a name to this building because now I, I like the idea of calling the building the AGBU Inspiration Hub because a lot of inspiration is coming from AGBU because mm -hmm. we have big plans for the future expanding our existence or our presence in Armenia. Uh, plus the feedback and the input we are receiving from the other organizations. As I said, you know, education is, uh, is key. We are partnering. We have already partnered with TUMO. Mm -hmm. uh, TUMO is one of the success stories in Armenia. And now we have opened uh, TUMO in Gyumri. And we are about to open uh, two more in Stepanagert in, on uh, September 2nd. So this is a full-fledged partnership. It's not just, you know, like AGBU is financing, two more is... No, it's a complete partnership between two more and AGBU. And uh, so this is one of the partnerships we have started. And we are even thinking of expanding this partnership and implementing it in the diaspora as well. Uh, maybe in Lebanon, maybe in Argentina, it's still in the, you know, uh, feasibility study uh, phase. Another partnership which is developing quite nicely is what we have with uh, going on with uh, IPE. IPE, uh, I don't know if you've heard of IPE, Absolutely. it's an uh, education uh, foundation uh, created a few years ago, but now it's another success story within the education field in Armenia. And the, the reason why we, we are partnering with them, because it's not, it, it might today uh, look like an isolated and maybe some sort of a, uh, elitist uh, uh, example, but it's not. I can assure you that it's not. Because they have a, a long-term plan uh, to duplicate the success story, first of all, in Armenia, in the public schools of Armenia, and as far as I recall, um, by 2025, uh, their, uh, what they call it, the Araradian Baccalaureate, which they are working at right now, I'll touch upon that, is going to be <coughs> implemented, or they're going to have sections to teach the Araradian Baccalaureate in all of the high schools in Armenia and oh, Artsakh. So they have a long-term plan. And the Araradian Baccalaureate is a national curriculum, Armenian curriculum, that provides excellent education in Armenian in addition to several second languages of the choosing of the student. Russian, English, Spanish, Chinese even, mm -hmm. they can teach you. And they proved, I mean, they are co cooperating with the best in the world. They're cooperating with the University of Cambridge from England and 
they are cooperating with the UCL, University yeah. of, uh, College of London. And they have two parallel lines going together. They are developing the curriculum, but it's not enough. I mean, they are developing also the teachers who will be qualified enough to teach that curriculum. So coming back to our partnership with IPE, this is just a backdrop mm -hmm. of why we are partnering with IPE, because it's a success story. It's in education, which is our uh, one of our priorities. So uh, we're trying to partner with them to create something which we had uh, similar to uh, Melkonian school. Boys. Melkonian, you know, uh, was a, a boarding school where Armenian students from, you know, usually the region went there for uh, two reasons. First, to get Armenian education and second, to get good education that will prepare them to go to the best universities of the world. Well, now, what we are saying as AGBU, with partnering with uh, IPE, and creating a boarding school with IPE, mm -hmm. because uh, AGBU has the capability of uh, hosting students from not only the region, maybe from the world. Mm -hmm. So we are providing them with excellent Armenian education, as I said, this Araradian Baccalaureate, mm -hmm. which is also an excellent education, which is going to be accredited and uh, uh, accepted internationally. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in addition to all that, instead of giving them the Cypriot uh, experience, I mean, living in Cyprus, we're giving them the Armenian experience. So we are fulfilling the first two, which Melkonian was providing, but we are adding a third, which is very important, which is having the Armenian experience to live on your homeland, to experience, you know, interacting with the local people, to see the possibilities to see the opportunities, and then perhaps, you know, tying these people to the homeland and after getting their education here and maybe continuing to the best universities in the world, coming and giving back to the country. So this is one of the things we are now studying with IPE. Uh, we are also trying uh, to study the possibility of exporting the know-how of IPE to several of our schools in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And I, after you know, these discussions, now we are talking about introducing of the same program in Western Armenia, not only in Eastern Armenia. Mm -hmm. So that would also be available here. So uh, you see, I mean, uh, there are so many things that uh, we are trying to do. Uh, and uh, just you know, coming here and uh, in these wonderful offices with uh, our good uh, neighbors, I think a lot is going to come out of the, this building. AGBU is one of the uh, oldest uh, and most powerful organizations uh, with a proven uh, track record, uh, clean history. And I mean, as I mentioned, uh, we've been in education and culture throughout our history. So, and what we are concentrating on are these two uh, points and added this development issue, which is something new, which is something we could not think about before because mm -hmm. there was no uh, mm -hmm. Armenia. So, uh, so we, are, we exist in so many countries. We have an established network and networking is important in any uh, field whether it's an NGO, it's a business, or whatever. Networking is a big asset, and AGBU has that. Uh, so putting all that together, you know, your history, your track record, your uh, network, your vision, traditions. Uh, traditions. So I think all of this is uh, uh, ready platforms mm -hmm. for all these organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a win-win situation. And because we believe that, you know, all of these organizations, they are converging around the same uh, priorities, national priorities. So coming from that, uh, and as I said before, we are not taking away from the diaspora and investing here. We have, we believe that helping 
the country, helping the motherland become stronger, will eventually help the diaspora. This is something that we believe in. Initially, we said, you know, uh, Hayastan is Spirkov, Spirka Hayastanov. We are starting to believe that, you know what? Spirka, Spirka Hayastanov. Because if we don't have a Hayastan, if we don't have a strong Hayastan, if we don't have a strong Armenia, a country, again, I mentioned it before, preserving our identity, our culture, our national heritage, our uh, being Armenian is going to be tougher and tougher. And we can, we have, everybody's experiencing it as individuals, as organizations, as schools, as the church. You know, if we cannot deny that it is becoming harder and harder to keep the Armenians together because um, it, life is becoming so much more difficult. But when these kids, these young kids, they have something to look up to, something to be proud of, I can bet that they, they will decide that, you know what, I'm happy to be Armenian. And once they do, they will find a way of preserving their identity, of, you know, forcing themselves to, to learn Armenian, to learn about their culture, to, re to learn about their rich history. But they need to be proud of being Armenian. And Armenia as a country, the, 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 the potential that it embodies, the success stories that you will see during your few days visit, and we will make sure that you see the success stories. Actually, this was our aim from our uh, last General Assembly. The last General Assembly, which was the early the first week of uh, April, you know, we shied away from taking our delegates from Garni, Kerat, Khorvirav. We didn't take them to these places. We moved away from you know, concentrating on the touristic visits. And we took them, we showed them the success stories of our meeting. You know? mm -hmm. And it made such a big impact from engineering, from uh, education, from schools, from uh, cultural initiatives. And it is not only the Armenians who are, I mean, uh, for local Armenians. More, a lot of these success stories are created by diasporan Armenians. And these initiatives, these success stories, of course they are helping make the country stronger, but also they are helping the Armenians of the diaspora, you know, uh, feel proud of them being Armenian. And as I said, once a young Armenian decides, because he has the choice, you know, it's not like 20, it's not like the generation we, we were in. You know, your father says, you know, you have to go to the Armenian club, you have to learn Armenian, you have to play basketball, you have to be a scout. You can't do this with the new generation anymore. They have to be convinced that, you know, they have to go, they have to learn Armenian. And how are you going to do that? They have to be f proud of being Armenian. And once they do, believe me, I mean, the train will, will go. I mean, the boat will sail uh, much more, uh, more smoother. So it's, it's a tough decision. But again, I say we are not taking from the diaspora and putting more here. We are trying to do more here, yes, but we are soliciting, we are finding people who are, believe in this vision, okay? And uh, yes, we are trying to do more in Armenia, but not At taking expense. away from the diaspora. Uh, we, I mean, the only things, the only programs that uh, stopped uh, in the diaspora are the ones that were not sustainable. Mm -hmm. but. The ones that are needed, that even they need big amounts of subsidy from uh, the central office, they are continuing. The ones that we believe that they should still exist, they are continuing. We are not cutting anything from the <coughs> diaspora and uh, redirecting mm -hmm. that those finances to Armenia. It's not the case. But yes, we do believe that we should do more here but because of a conviction, because we believe that if we do more here, if Armenia becomes stronger, and then it will 
certainly affect the Armenians in the diaspora. You know, I've had the privilege of meeting uh, Mr. Nazar and uh, his wife, his lovely wife. And uh, he's such a uh, Baba Marte in Chesil. Baba, yeah. And you would be amazed that, you know, when we were building this uh, building, uh, I know and I feel it, I felt it, that even from, you know, 6,000 uh, kilometers away, he was following the details as to how it was, you know, the building was progressing, the quality of work, and, and uh, it's such a privilege to have such a person to donate this extraordinary uh, building, which, in my opinion, is the best building not only in Armenia but in the region. Oh. And you, you, I mean, uh, you, you will visit the building. You will see the way it was designed, the the it was the way it was built, the technologies that are uh, used, the quality of the finishing, the material, everything that we have done is uh, exceptional. And you know, uh, when I mentioned that we're partnering with Tumo, mm -hmm. Tumo is a concept, but it's put in an environment that is it's flourishing in. If you take the same concept and put it in a room with computers, I'm, I will bet you that it will not be as successful Bravo. as it is today. That's a very good point. Here, it's the same thing. You know, AGBU has, yes, a rich history. It has a mission. And uh, now this building and what it embodies and the messages, the statements that we are making through the building, through the design of the building, through the interior of the building, AGBU is going to flourish, not only in Armenia, but it's going to affect its uh, activities around the world. You've seen the facade. It's the exact <coughs> replica of the first Duma of the city of Yerevan. Mm -hmm. When we decided to you know, rebuilt the facade of that building. We didn't know the details of it. It turns out that that building was built in Yerevan in 1906. Mm. The date AGBU was founded. Mm. 